If you give me 45 seconds, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Parabola so you won't miss another question, get a perfect score on the SAT, and go to the college of your dreams with a full ride. I have like 20 seconds left, so I probably should hurry up. And because quadratics is a such a long chapter, we're going to divide this video into two parts. Part A, we're going to go over roots and discriminants. And second part, we're going to go over everything about vertex. I'm sorry. The second part is going to be uploaded in a couple days, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you will be notified when the second part is up. And if you're taking SAT at some point, you are going to see these quadratics slash parabola questions. It's inevitable. And to solve these questions, you can either spend five minutes on a single question like 90% of the students, or you can use the tactics that we're going to go over in this video and only spend 30 seconds and get the question right and start raising your SAT score. So what are all these parabola slash quadratics questions all about? Well, it's super easy to recognize them. First of all, they are going to have some kind of variable to the square power. And second, they're going to talk about the solutions a whole lot. Just knowing how to approach these questions alone can save you so much time and get you so many points. And to do just that, we're going to go over two things in this video. First, we're going to go over exactly what you can expect from a parabola slash quadratics question, what they look like. And second, we're going to go over exactly how you can solve them super quickly. Make sure you stick till the end of the video and smash the like button if you're ready to get started. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to go over in this video is going to be the definition of a root. They are also called zeros and x-intercepts and quadratic slash parabola questions. They love to use the words like that and you want to know exactly what they are. Otherwise, it's going to be 10 times harder. Okay. Second, after we learn that, we're going to go over how you can find these roots and how you can find the sum of the roots super quickly. And lastly, we're going to go over how you can find the number of the roots using discriminant. And even though it is a really simple concept, not many people know exactly what discriminant is, so they miss so many questions, these easy points. So we're going to go over them in depth. So what is a root, you ask? It's actually really simple. It's just where the graph intersects the x-axis. So x-axis is right here, and that is going to be intersection point. And this intersection point, we call it the x-intercept because that's where the graph is intercepting the x-axis, okay? And at these x-intercepts, what we know is that y value is always equal to zero, okay? And these intersection points, the SAT might call it the root, zeros, solutions, or x-intercepts, okay? One of the popular things the SAT does is they give you an equation like this. Y is equal to, let's say, 2x squared plus 6x plus 5. And they ask you to find when it's equal to, when y is equal to 0. And they ask you to find what the solution is. Okay? So solution is something that makes the equation true. And whenever the equation is equal to 0 for the y value, we know that they are asking for the x-intercept because that's where the y value is 0. Okay? So when the equation is set equal to zero, which means your y value is going to be equal to zero, that means you are looking for the x-intercepts, okay? That's going to be your solution. Find the x value that makes the y equal to zero because your y is equal to zero, okay? So that's going to be the definition of a root, which is x-intercept. So the first type is going to be finding root. So let's look at this equation right here. You see the two there, which means it's going to be a parabola question, okay? That's how you can recognize it. And let's read the question. If A is a solution of the equation above and A is greater than zero, what's the value of A? Okay. So if you remember from previous lectures, solution is going to be the number that makes equation true. Okay. So any number that makes this, this equation right there true is going to be your solution. And our equation says x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to zero. And you see how it's set equal to zero. And this part right here, that's going to be our y. And we want our y to equal zero. Okay. And when y is equal to zero, that's going to be our root. Because if you think about a parabola and where they cross the x-axis, the point of intersection right there is going to be your x-intercept or a root, which is the same thing. And at these points, our y is equal to zero. So whenever y is equal to zero, it's talking about the root. And how do we find the roots quickly? There's two ways that you can do it. First way is going to be factoring. And if factoring doesn't work out, that's when you go to quadratic formula. Okay, which is minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, this itself, it just way, takes way too long. So you want to avoid it as much as possible and you want to stick to factoring at all cost. So how do we factor this? It's just going to be x plus 4 and x minus 3. If you're not too familiar with factoring, you can just Google or YouTube a lot of videos and just learn from it super quickly. But if you would like for me to go over and make a quick, another video on it, just leave a comment down below. So that's going to be it. And it's going to look like that. 
And what's the value of x that makes the equation equal to zero? It's gonna be minus four and three. Because when x is equal to minus four, when you plug it in, it becomes minus four plus four of minus four plus or minus three is equal to zero. And this portion becomes a zero. So anything multiplied by a zero is going to be a zero. Therefore, minus four and three works. But can both of them be the answer? No, minus four can't be the answer because the question tells us that our solution has to be greater than zero, which means three can only be the answer. Does that make sense? Good. So the second way that you can solve, find the solutions is by using a quadratic formula, but it just takes way too long and you want to avoid it as much as possible. So whenever the question is asking you to find the roots, always stick to factoring. And you might be asking, hey, when do we use quadratic formula then? Do I not need to know it? No, you do. And you use it for this kind of question. So let's look at it again. This is finding roots part two. The question says, what are the solutions to this equation right there, right? And if you look at it, there is also a two there, which means it's going to be a parabola. When the exponent is two, it's always going to be a parabola question. And the equation is set equal to zero. That means your y is equal to zero, which means you are looking for x-intercepts, which are same thing as roots, right? So how do we find it? I mean, you could just factor it, right? So if you just divide it out, it becomes three x squared plus 12 x plus six. Let's simplify it, divide by three. It's gonna be x squared plus four x plus two is equal to zero. And many people could say, hey, why can't we just factor this and get the answer? The thing is you can't factor this. This is not factorable. It's gonna be disgusting if you try to factor it. So how do we recognize that we have to use quadratic formula? You look at the answer choices, okay? If you look at the answer choices and you see a plus minus, there is a 127% chance you're always gonna have to use quadratic formula. So that's how you can recognize it, okay? So if you just see a simple equation and it's factorable, just factor it. But if you look at the answer choices and there are these plus and minuses here, that's how you know you have to use the quadratic formula. So let's use the quadratic formula for this one. So our A, B, and C are going to be the coefficient of x squared, x, and just a number. So A is going to be one, B is going to be four, and C is just going to be two. So what's the quadratic formula? Minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC over two A. And our equation is going to be minus b, which is 4, plus or minus 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2. Okay? Divide by 2a, which is going to be 2 times 1. Okay? And that's going to be, if you simplify it, minus 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus 2 times 1 times 4 is 8. Divide by 2 is going to be minus 4 plus or minus 8. Divide by 2. And if you simplify it, the radical out, it becomes four times two, which is going to be two root two. So you get minus four plus minus two root two divided by two. And every single term has a two in it, which means you can simplify, which becomes minus two plus minus square root of two. And that's going to be our answer, or that's going to be our solution for this question. Okay. These are going to be our roots. So which one matches that? Choice A looks exactly like that. Okay. Does that make sense? So to summarize, Finding roots, there are two types. First, where you can just simply factor it and find the answer. Second one, where you have to use the quadratic formula. And how can we tell when we have to use quadratic formula? Look at the answer choices. If there's a plus or minus, 127% chance you have to use quadratic formula. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go to the next type. The question is asking, what's the sum of all values of m that satisfy this equation right there, right? So we're looking for values of m that satisfy that equation. And if you look at it, our y is equal to zero, which means again, we are looking for roots, okay? And that can also be confirmed by the fact that there's the highest exponent, which is two, which means it's going to be a parabola, okay? So what many people think is, okay, John, I'm just gonna factor it, find the root, add them up and find the sum. But let me blow your mind real quick. There's a quick, uh, there's a quick formula you can use, which is going to be sum of the roots can be found with minus b over a and the product of the roots can be found using c over a okay so for this one minus b over a is going to be 16 over a which is 2 which is going to be 8 our answer is going to be d does that make sense if you don't trust me go ahead take your time factor it out and add it up but our answer is going to be 8 okay so if the question is specifically asking for you to find the sum you don't need to find exactly individually what the roots are. You just need to know the sum. And to find that, just use this simple formula right here. For, for the product, 
Same thing, use the formula, okay? All right, last question. Discriminants, okay? What discriminant tells us is the number of roots. Based on what your discriminant is, we can tell whether there are two roots, which looks like this, two roots, or just a one root where it just touches the x-axis, or there's no root at all, okay? So based on the discriminant, we can find out how many roots there are. So let's try this question. In the equation above, t is a constant. If the equation has no real solutions, which the following could be the value of t? So the moment you see that, you should look at the equation and be like, okay, there's a two, that means it's a parabola. So it has to be something related to roots. There's a big chance. So what you do is you try to isolate everything into one side. So if we move t to the other side, it becomes 2x squared minus 4x minus t is equal to zero, okay? Now that our y is equal to zero, we can just find roots, okay? And our roots will be our solutions, which is what the question asking for, solution, okay? And it says there's no real solution, right? So in within a parabola and there's no real solution, that means there's going to be zero roots or x-intercepts. Okay, and when are there zero roots? There are zero roots when your discriminant is less than zero. And discriminant can be found by this equation, b squared minus 4ac, okay? So based on the question, we know that there are no solution and no solution means our discriminant has to be less than zero or it has to be negative, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little inequality, b squared minus 4ac has to be less than zero. Okay, and we're going to plug in a, b, and c in it. So what's our b? It's going to be minus 4. So minus 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, and c, which is going to be t, right? Because t is just a constant, which means it's going to be a number, right? So, and we know this has to be less than 0, which means it's going to be 16 minus 8t has to be less than 0. And the question asks, which of the following could be the value of t, which means one of these is going to be your t value. So as long as our t makes this inequality true, that means we're not gonna have any solution and that's going to be your answer. So what we do is we just start plugging it in. So let's start with choice A. Um, our t is going to be minus three. So if you plug it in, it becomes 16 minus eight times minus three is less than zero, which is 16 minus minus 24, which is going to be 40 and that's not less than zero. So negative numbers are not going to work because we are essentially just adding to 16. So let's try choice D because it's a positive number. Let me erase this right here and this too. So what's our T going to be? It's going to be three. So we just plug it in to our equation, 16 minus eight times three, it has to be less than zero. And 16 minus 24 is less than zero. Yes, it is. Minus eight is less than zero, right? So when T is equal to three, we know that our discriminant is less than zero. And when discriminant is less than zero, that means there's going to be no roots. Therefore, our answer is going to be B. Does that make sense? So whenever you see a parabola with a two in it and they talk about like one solution, no solution or two solutions, it's always going to be discriminant. Make sure you remember that, okay? Parabola and number of solutions is always going to be discriminants, okay? Hope that makes sense. So those are going to be the questions that you want to know how to recognize and solve for a parabola root question. If you can solve those questions, you are golden, you are set. And if all of these questions make complete sense to you and you just got them, hey, congratulations, you're going to be set. However, if some things didn't make sense or you're like kind of iffy on a couple questions, then I highly recommend you go down to the link in the description box down below. We'll take you to a private lecture where it goes over every single thing we just talked about in this video, step by step with a worksheet so you can follow along easily. Sorry about that. And after the lecture, there is also going to be a set of practice questions where you can just print them out and try them on your own. And you can really tell whether you understood the topic or not. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. And if you made it until the end, until right here, good job. Let me get the high five. If you guys found the video helpful, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on because I release this kind of video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3.30 p.m. And we're going to summarize exactly what you need to know for the SAT so you won't have to spend so much time just going over books and books and books trying to figure out what you have to know for the SAT. It's just going to save you so much time and get your score to where you want it to be that much faster. And if there is a topic that you want to see next or if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.
Thomas looking flyer than me. And I got that gold rolly with the bezel and Louis Vuitton on my body. And I know this shit don't impress you, so no bullshit, girl, nothing extra. Girl, I ain't playing games. I wanna take your home.